All right, hey everyone, this is the short recap for week 29, chill kernel hacking for fun. Um, I'm gonna go through the two hour stream right now and just give you the highlights and the best moments from it based off of me having just done this. So um, for the first 16 minutes, I just kind of recap last week and uh, just kind of demonstrate exactly the point we were at um, at the end of last week, which was just barely getting into the, the C code of the trap handler. Um, so kind of just get a base foundation from last week and then, um, then from there, I'm just kind of reading into the C code of the trap handler to understand it a bit better. Around the um, 30 minute mark, is where I start looking into this um, soft int. Yeah, this is where it is. The soft int uh, user space program. Beforehand, before this, I was only looking at the divide by zero error, but now I'm looking at some other kinds of interrupts and exceptions. This one is pretty interesting because it's a user space program that tries to manually do an interrupt 14 via the interrupt instruction, which is also not the, the number, the syscall uh, interrupt we're using here. So it's kind of just a, a random um, interrupt that it's trying to trigger. It's actually the page fault handler. And the point of this is just to observe how the CPU basically um, downgrades that attempt to fire an interrupt into a general protection fault if interrupt 14 uh, either doesn't exist or is not uh, basically advertised as being accessible from user space in the IDT. Um, and user space should not be triggering page the page fault handler <laughs> just however it wants to. And so in our case, we're definitely disabling it in the uh, IDT. And so, so the next bit is just kind of investigating how this works, kind of this downgrade um, machinery. We kind of go into the manual a bit at points. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm just explaining this. Around, around uh, 33 minutes, I also implement the general protection fault handler for the first time, which is honestly a kind of a big deal. Um, up until this point, if anything goes wrong with the kernel, it just triggers reboots like crazy. So with the with the general protection fault handler now in place, finally, the kernel doesn't just continually reboot all the time if there's any kind of uh, memory error or stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Um, around 42 minute mark, I also implement the page fault handler, just kind of the, yeah, just the, like not, not the full page fault handler, but just the entry point. Uh, so we can kind of begin to handle page faults as an explanation also for that um, soft int, soft int thing. Um, nice. At 46. Yeah, here's where we go into the manual and try to find where this behavior is documented, where interrupt instructions, um, if they are not permitted by the kernel, they get converted into a general protection exception. And this is at least one part of the manual where I could see that um, in the documentation for the interrupt instruction. At one hour, yeah, um, I think I'm just kind of reading forward for, an, for the next bit, um, going through the lab, kind of answering some questions from this MIT lab that I'm following. At one hour and one about, um, I start debugging a, a bug actually in my code. Um, and so I actually had implemented, um, the GP fault incorrectly, and it was causing some of these tests to fail. And my bug was that I, I um, the GP fault, 
I believe, um, the bug was I was using the wrong um, macro for kind of declaring the assembly stub. We have, I have two different kinds of macros. One, um, if the interrupt pushes an error code on the stack, and then one if it doesn't. And I was uh, I didn't reference the documentation, and I had a bug there. Um, and if I can skip forward fast enough, I can maybe, so right, yeah, right here, I'm using the no error macro for all of these, and that's actually incorrect. Um, this is correct because GP faults and page faults actually do push an error code on the stack. So, so that was actually resulting in a bug, which I debugged. Um, and here at the one, Oh, six mark for a while. I'm kind of looking into this bad segment C program, which tries to load the kernel's TSS selector into the DS register, which should not work and cause a, a, a GP fault. Um, that just worked automatically. I didn't need to do anything special for that. Um, so yeah, this is just explaining that with the GDT is stuff like that. Um, yeah, around one hour, so I don't, this is just looking at the interrupts. I think I was, at this point, I was I was doing a bunch of just renaming of things because I had all, like, all these kind of weird inconsistent names for these stub things. So I was just kind of trying to find how to name them. But around the one, I did some git stuff and just cleaned up the git. Around 126, though, I started working on this page fault exercise um, it's pretty simple. It's just um, dispatching page faults based off of the um, the trap number, which is which is basically what I'm doing right here. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> just simply take the trap number out of the trap frame and then dispatch and call the right function based on it. That was pretty simple. Um, yeah. At a bit further, I start working on the next one, which is the breakpoint exception. Um, also not really that involved. Um, basically just the same thing, implementing the macro and stuff, the IDT entry just to handle uh, breakpoints from the execute from user space. And the notable difference about the breakpoint interrupt handler. Okay, here's me doing some Vim stuff very s slowly. The notable thing about the interrupt handler is that unlike almost any one of these, the interrupt handler is actually meant to be accessible from us user space. It is actually um, meant for user space to trigger int three interrupts. And so here's me. I mean, I have the bug. I have the bug right now. I, I'm, I'm setting the permissions to zero for the breakpoint interrupt, but that's actually not correct. And at some point I figured this out because things don't work. And so, yeah, I just fixed it there and changed it to three such that user space actually is able to trigger this without GP faulting. Um, and that is pretty much the last significant thing I did in the stream. After that point, it was just a little bit of cleaning things up, uh, tiny amount of code to actually invoke the kernel monitor from the breakpoint exception. That's what I'm doing here. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's it for week 29 of my uh, chill kernel hacking. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, and I'll see you next week. See ya. Bye.